deeper understanding uh, needs to be had here when we're looking at uh, opportunity in stock market investing. It helps to draw perspective. And really what it comes down to me is either optimism or pessimism. That's really what it comes down to me. Guys, I'm 45 years old. There's people who are 20s that'll hear my message and they're not going to get it. Um, there's people my age who um, have, have either signed up their allegiance on one side of the house or another um, to determine how they want to live life. They want to go through life um, completely careful and scared and um, never opportunistic and never want to take a chance and 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 never want to put risk on the table. Uh, I'm not like that uh, in reflection of my life. Um, it's made all the difference in the many successes, if not the vast majority of the successes that I've had is my willingness to put risk on the table, um, as well as some of my shortcomings, which has also uh, been a direct result of my opportunistic thought, my opportunistic uh, approach to life. And uh, I wouldn't have been where I am today if it weren't for that uh, opportunistic uh, opportunity that I've provided for myself. It's just that simple. Um, and in reflection, and I don't know if you guys can resonate with this idea, whenever I rely on others, rely on the advice of others, or rely on the successes or failures of others and trying to write the ways of, uh, of, of, of their deficiencies as it somehow incorporates into my life, it doesn't seem to stick. Uh, the only thing that ever sticks for me are those decisions that I make, some hard, some easy, but I make them on my own. And those are the ones that pay off the most. Relationships, real estate, business, the independent investor channel, um, being in service as long as I have. All those decisions were made on my own accord when they felt right at certain impasses in my life. Now, some of them have proven out to be uh, investments or commitments or things that I have brought into my life that uh, are wide open now. They're continuing to pay me. They're um, investments that have bloomed, right? My relationship with my wife, my family, uh, my career. My career has bloomed into a garden of of absolute beauty and and it's funny too like that opportunistic uh avenue has provided me some insights and share with you now in that money is earned in a lot of different fashions okay i know contrary to what you've heard and what you've learned and what you want to think you understand about money would have you suggest that you go to work you earn money you spend money you take a small piece of that, segue it to the side, and hopefully that adds up to something material into your future. I don't mean to deduce or judge how it is that you live and what you do with your time. There's a lot of people on this earth that don't even have you know, one-tenth the opportunity that we have here in the United States. With that said, um, it's amazing how humans react to being placed in a corner and being told that they don't have opportunity. The sheer reality is that those in this world, um, in its vast majority, that are able to accumulate wealth in this life are those that started with nothing. And I think the pedigree and the recipe that goes into that idea is this idea that I'm sharing with you now. In that optimism probably has more of its place in association with successful thought and successful uh, outcomes uh, than pessimism. Okay. I'm not suggesting that being pessimistic and being careful and being cautious and 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 being you know reserved in your application doesn't potentially have its place. I'm just here to share. <laughs> With you guys, that the dynamic forces that oppose each other, pessimism and optimism in my life, are all too often overshadowed by optimism. And sometimes it blinds my decision making because I'm a believer. I'm, I'm a believer wholeheartedly that we have a finite amount of time here on this earth. 
I'm a, I'm a believer that establishing a life perhaps may be better than what you were provided um, by your your parents in way of maybe uh, a legacy is is something that I hold dear as a responsibility that I take and and I uh, execute along every single day. Um, it drives my aggressive passion. Uh, my dreams certainly do formulate and 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 allow me to uh, put some deductive reasoning around the decision making that I do. Okay. We frame the discussion this week on highly on holdings, which is a, a company that I have been uh, on some commitments out of pocket uh, and have been able unable to unable to discuss with the audience from a weekly perspective. Um, the stock is at an all-time low. This is a fact. Highly on Holdings has entered into what I dubbed um, a good many months ago as being a bridging phase. Uh, the stock is suffering for it. Every piece of good news that comes only sees the stock digress another 25%. We Naria find ourselves in any one given specific day where we can find the stock up. Where I define the level of um, lunacy when it comes to this stock price, uh, I'm I'm further uh, given uh, validation that um, my redefinition is in order of it going further uh, into the ludic ludicrous category. The fact of the matter is is this. We are in a very, very lean period right now, indicated by the current stock price at all-time lows. This is where we are. You can justify it one way or the other. You can justify it being justified. Um, you can look at it and say it's unjustifiable. Okay. None of that stuff matters for the sake of dialogue and banter and and, and potentially understanding um, what body of work has been put on with Hylian and, and the project thus far really doesn't matter. Does it jade your decision-making going forward with what you do know? I came out with a funny video. I just released it and I'm, I'm doing my, my serious Ryan independent investor channel video. Cause there's only one of me. There's only one perspective. I still think we're 100% right on on this project. I have no doubt in my mind to share with you guys some insights on how I'm going about uh, framing my thesis going forward is going to be invaluable for you. Um, I, I want to remind each and every one of you guys to do your own due diligence on stock market investing for yourself and, and identify those uh, specific pockets where an opportunity like this may fit into your portfolio. I'm not here to make those fits for you. Uh, I'm here to provide a conduit to information. And that information is driven toward one singular goal, and that is to make money. Contrary to what we've experienced over the last three years, I will say it again. My goal is to make money. The method to that end is, in this case, investing in a company that has a, a, an unwritten short to medium term. I think it's easier for me to envision this company longer term having a place in the commercial industry as their solution we can all agree on is quite good. Attacked as of recent, yes. Uh, will they sell product? Are they going to nothing? Is the stock going to nothing? Will they ever sell product? Yada, yada, yada. Okay. I leave that uh, type of dialogue to the uneducated. I leave that conversation and dialogue to those in the retail community who have uh, as of as of late, or if ever, 
have learned to discover what it takes to actually invest speculatively in the stock market and the level of risk tolerance necessary to engage in that end. Um, I could take 10 of my patrons and I could sit down with them in a room and it would take me an entire day to get an iota of understanding and consensus amongst those 10 in the group with me if I was allowed to talk nothing but investing, to get to know those individuals, to understand what makes them them, what makes their opportunity in stock market either robust or lean, what type of investor they are, what type of products could be aligned to satisfy that investor's palette and strategy, and dare I suggest maybe meet those long-term goals into the future for each of those 10 respective investors that I would sit down with and have a dialogue with, with the idea that I'm going to understand them more and they are going to understand me more at the end of that. Let's just call it eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. Okay. It would take me a day to increase the level of knowledge and understanding and reciprocation and understanding, okay, this will work for you. Maybe not so much in this category, take a little bit off the top here, Soften up a little bit here on your intentions. You're way too aggressive here. Put that effort and energy somewhere over here. And I do that for each of the 10 respective candidates that I'm sitting down with. Social media has the potential of bringing thousands and thousands of different opinions, rogues of opinions, opinions that I could presume if I was going to sit down with a good portion of them. Never comment on the channel and never give me any type of uh, reciprocation to understand that either they appreciate the information or they hate the information. I have nary have understood that about social media. That's the beauty and mystery behind it is that I throw that message out into a black hole without any type of understanding of who and where and how the intent of the message is going to be received. I digress. There is a quantifiable pulse on the community which would suggest that the message aligned with the wrong situation is coming back to me in consensus fashion. And that means that there is a pocket of the group that somehow feel like they've been duped uh, or they've been misled or that um, they have seen something, the light, and want to share that light with me as to how it should pertain to me. They have the vision and they want to share the vision with me on how I'm misguided, this and that. But it is par for the course to understand that the scrutiny, um, the attacks on me, um, the attacks on the family, you don't know my family, and quite honestly, you don't know me either, are at peak. And the relationship and the, um, you know, the, um, uh, the irony is that highly on stock right now, as we speak, has just dipped down to all time lows. I mean, it is a dollar 83 is just laughable. It's laughable. They got all kinds of cash on the books. It doesn't matter. They don't have any debt. It doesn't matter. They've got a good team. They've got a good head. They've got a good order queue, a backlog. None of it matters. Does not matter. Stock market is pricing highly on holdings as if it is going to expire its cash and go out of business before they even have the chance to see the light of day with regard to a commercially viable product that we can de delineate can provide uh, consistent product to the marketplace and that that demand will meet that uh, production capability. And so the attacks fly, right? I would pose this to the audience in understanding whether or not those criticisms are because of the past or because of the present or because of the future. 
So in other words, and I'll give you guys why you guys watch the video, then you can shut it down. You don't have to listen to me rant at all. I have been aggressively buying highly on holdings here for the last two weeks. I have been buying the stock in increments of 500 share blocks. Um, entry price about two months ago was the highest that it's been in the last six, and that was $3.17. Two incremental blocks of buys last year, excuse me, last week in the tune of $1.87 and one final buy in the increment of 500 shares for the price of around $1.93, okay, $1.93. The conviction of highly on holdings is investing into the future potential, not past performance. If you are new to the company, the video that I put out today on behalf of Ronaldo, who I don't know very well, uh, but uh, he contacted me and said, hey, I'd like to do a highly on video. I don't know anything about it. You know, do I have your permission? I said, hell, I don't own the product. It'd be, it's just, I don't own the name. I don't own it in anything. He said, great, I'm going to do this. I don't know squat about the company, but I'm going to mention you a couple of times. I said, no problem. Do your thing. I said, do you realize that your your name is the acronym for RNG? And he was like, no, I never I never realized that. And I was like, yeah, it's it's meant to be. And he was like, yeah, well, my buddy told me about this stock and I wanted to check it out. And I was like, have at her, man. Good luck with you. Um, you'll probably invest in the company at $1.83 and it'll end up in 50 cents and you'll be out next month anyway. So it's not going to matter. Um, have at it, tear it up. All the best of luck to you. That inevitably is what the stock market would have you believe is the luck is the only thing that is on your side. The only thing that we have going for us in this particular juncture that um, taking a thesis uh, on a particular company um, cannot in the way that we define it be deployed and actually see it pay off in the time that we define as necessary for that said investment to pay off. With that observation in mind, I want you guys to, to think about a few things when you're talking about investing in general, okay? There's a few common misconceptions about investing that I, I think we need to discuss now. If you can avoid over levering to a company, I highly recommend that you do that. It would probably help take the edge off a little bit on a position that I'm down in. I've been a bull and an investor since the beginning. I've sold the company twice. I sold sub 20 and I sold around $12. Um, the sub 20 sale was actually to render a $6,000 profit of the company. Okay. So when I say nobody's ever made money, I would, I would remind you that that was the sale that I actually made money. Now I did liquidate a position to take a tax loss on the position uh, before coming out of 2020, going into 2021, okay? So there's been two specific liquidations in the company. Um, I never purchased the shares above 20. I did not purchase the shares above 30. I did not purchase the shares above 40. And finally, I did not purchase the shares above 50 nor did I purchase the shares on the way down south of 50. I did not purchase the shares south of 40. I did not purchase the shares south of 30, 20. It was around the $10 mark where I looked at the IPO initial entrance price and I started to figure that things were starting to get compressed on the low end and started to enter the share. Now, if there was any criticism of the share buying that I did at the time, I was buying some pretty big shares of block. And I think in retrospect, if I was going to share some learnings um, that I've got razor sharp now, there's no better learnings in the stock market than actually working through these different scenarios and different lessons that you take and incorporate into your repertoire going forward. But for me, buying such large chunks in the 10, 12, 9, 8 range 
because I was kind of calling a bottom of it and breaking the number one rule of not trying to catch a falling knife, probably breaking the same rule now with an acknowledgement that the stock at the time when I was buying it was eight, nine, 10, 11, $12. And now buying it at a dollar 83 should be much more justifiable um, in the eyes of a company that I don't think has changed material. I, I would suggest that I don't think it's changed materially too much from 58 to a dollar 83. I really don't. I think the stock market, whatever short games are being played right now, whatever manipulation is happening, uh, in the stock market, I'm quick to just call bullshit on it. I think that the word and the verdict is out. I think that they can molest the stock all they want. And you've got guys like my share self saying calmly hold because it will be a matter of time before this company cannot be denied anymore. And what used to be opportunities that were put into a dark room, locked up, and only a few had access to, but for the vast majority of people, the key was thrown away and that opportunity in way of information was made unavailable to people out there. I'm here to shed light on this corner. And as long as the prolonged darkness is beset upon this company, I will continue to shed light on the fact that I, I think we are sitting on a real gold mine here. I really do. The factors at play that would drive my decision are very, very simple. That they're not hard. That they are not hard. Do we keep the status quo with diesel, or do we look to leverage new technology? You can say you can suggest, Ryan. I think we're going to remain with diesel for the next hundred years. It's a it's an opinion. I have my opinion that of which I'm quick to offer some substantiation and potential for me to be completely wrong. Uh, what's to suggest that when I look out on the freeway and see a diesel-dominated present, that the status quo is not going to be maintained and we're going to continue to ship our goods uh, using number two diesel? It's, 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 it's reasonable. It's easier to resonate with that idea. It takes much more imagination to imagine a something other than the status quo. We are people of visual validation on this earth. We have a very, very difficult time in many cases looking at something and imagine it being something else. Okay. Even what we know about Hylion and the progress of the Hypertruck ERX coming to its final approval, certifications, iterations, some of the small tidbits of information that we're getting in way of the winter testing that's happening up north on the border has me absolutely convinced, absolutely convinced that we have a viable product that can move parcels from point A to point B and do so leveraging existing infrastructure that exists now, we could put the solution to work as of yesterday. And you would still have people that would presume that the status quo will hold true and companies like Hylion and Nikola and Hyzon and some of the others will not find their place and this will fall on deaf ears and we will continue to maintain the status quo, even in the face of what we understand about what we should be doing with our obligation. Uh, and that is at, and that is looking at the potential for less harmful technology uh, as it pertains to the, the, the current posture and care that we take over our planet. Okay. What incentive do the logistics and shipping companies have to put the stress test against the status quo and actually entertain the idea of change? Why change? In short, why change? Well, we are in a time here in 2023 where everybody is focused on interest rates, we are focused on inflation. We are talking about um, we are talking about negative aftershocks 
from a pandemic that shocked the world. We're dealing with an all-time high uh, real estate market. We're talking about a never-been-so-volatile stock market. We're talking about an age now in 2023, my friends, where long-term investing is dead. It's dead. It's no longer a thing. Nobody does it. It's fallen to an all-time low here in 2023. Nobody believes in the stock market anymore. Nobody. By nature of statistics, it's a fact. You can go check it out for yourself. And the statistics are probably being propped up by the very few people that uh, own their 401k and would contribute to it no matter what. Most of those people know that it's good to save for their financial future, and that's the end of it. That's all they know. Okay. But the mandates and the incentives is what I speak of, my friends, that are providing a cross current of need to challenge the status quo at present. RNG incentives, such as the $1 incentive bill that is being proposed to Congress uh, to provide different fueling alternatives for the fleets. Do I believe that diesel production and diesel use and, and, and augmenting our logistics fleet as massive as it is, is going to go away? No, I've always contended that I do believe that optionality is the key amongst the fleet with regard to the logistics chains and their ability to look at their specific runs that they're making and potentially augment new technology where appropriate. Now, some are going to play ball. Some are not going to play ball. I don't care. Okay. The, the fact of the matter is, as an investor, I have to look at the cross currents going on with the current status quo. And I need to look at the pressure, however you look at the degree of pressure on the logistics space and the customers on the back end that are demanding change. They are demanding change. And I think over the coming five to 10 years, you're going to find that there is more of an acceptance of new technology because people are going to become less acceptance, acceptable of the status quo. In other words, it's time to change. It's time to stop turning a blind eye. And it's time to start acknowledging that where technology exists out there in the marketplace, that we need to start to incorporate some of these technologies into the fleets. Okay. I digress. We'll come back to Hylion. How is it that Hylion is going to be looking to make a dent into the commercial space? My friends, I remember a time when an order was an order and Hylion had their thousand uh, agility truck back order. And I remember thinking to myself, we have a long way to go from seed pod to something special, whatever that tree or whatever that fruit tree or blossoming tree or, 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 or maturity that is going to happen over the coming years is going to look like as the Hylion story uh, evolves over time. Okay. We knew we were just at the very, very starting place. We were in a time where we were dealing with a pre-revenue company. We are no longer a pre-revenue company. The company is uh, garnering some interest in their product, the hybrid product that is not very hyped, not advertised, and not showcased um, really outside of a few uh, of the ACT expos and some of the other trade shows where it's mentioned. And the word in industry is that they understand that this product is available from a commercial perspective, and they're selling quite a few of those units, okay? Now, the Hypertruck ERX is the one that everybody is interested in, in that it meets a full electro uh, electronic uh, powertrain solution. And I think that's where the fleets are really looking looking at that angle if i'm being presumptuous of all it's where i would look okay and if i'm going to be fair they're probably looking at as tesla is looking at or pepsi is looking at tesla as an opportunity looking at all of the different opportunities that are offered by cummins with their um, um 
compressed natural gas option. Um, the options that are out there in my assessment are lean. There's not a lot that is dabbling in the space right now. And the cross current that I speak of is the undertow of, 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 of pushing toward more of a sustainable future with regard to application of new technology and optionality amongst the different lines as they deploy their fleets out in the logistics space to deliver our goods from day to day. Okay. The question at, at this point is, you know, will Hylion have its place? <clears throat> what is the degree of um, Hylion's market penetration that will be necessary to see this story go from something right now that is deeply, deeply questioned uh, to something that is commercially viable? Okay, we we just just can't current don't have those uh, answers now. We don't, and we are uh, alive and well in what I consider to be the ice age and transitional year here in twenty twenty three, stepping toward what I feel like is an inevitable end. What that end looks like, my friends, I I can't tell you. All right, I can't tell you, but the small pieces. The small pieces that have been put in motion, do they add up to more than a dollar eighty-three of value? You have a lot of dynamic forces pressing this company down. Okay. We know that it's continually shorted. Uh, we know that it's continually downgraded. We know conversely that the large institutions own massive share blocks in the company, uh, conversely uh, supplemented by the fact that retail investors have exited the company at record pace and that the remaining few people that I speak to into the echo chamber, a few of which I know are out there and listen to the message, are holding strong uh, with the idea that the tide will eventually turn and Hylion will seek out and settle out at a value that's a little bit more, a um, little bit more indicative of the opportunity rather than the reality that is being assessed now. And that reality, right or wrong, that's being assessed right now in a company that is pushing all time lows uh, to, to new lows, it's seemingly every single day and every new week. Um, is 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 alive and well. I just I this is just where we are now currently. But when we look at the small pieces, we start with the CEO. We talk about the the founder and CEO Tom Healy. Um, young, energetic, still involved. Uh, I see um, no reprieve in his demeanor. Uh, just as committed. Do we interpret the current silence on the line as being a positive or negative? I don't think either one of those really have its place. We can discuss in way of banter on what we think that it means. I, for one, think there's far more going on behind the scenes than we will be made preppy to. And it leaves the investor on a plane to make a decision of whether or not you want to invest in this company for the future or not. We've picked up employees uh, at a very nice clip. Um, the total employee count sits at about 250 right now. Um, it adds to a very lean business model of operations. Next year is an anticipated 130 to 140 cash burn, excuse me, this year in 2023 uh, through the Q1 to Q4 quarters of this and next year going into 2024. 130, 140, we can handle that with no problem. Where we are from now until then is every day an exercise in futility, watching the clock tick by. When and if that happens next week, next month, next year, my friends, we are in this together. And if you have the answer, Kindly share with me. I will hear you out, okay? But make, make no mistake. My conviction lies in that those inevitable categories will be, uh, will, will be 
forthcoming. They will happen and they will move the stock and they will move the stock faster than you'll be able to react to that. I can guarantee. Okay. I think a lot of people have pushed the stock down so much that they feel like it is impossible to incur a catalyst next week. It is impossible to expect a catalyst next month or in six months. I think that's a huge, huge mistake and proven to be a huge mistake many, many times in the bullish application of a optimistic investor, many times in history. In other words, I would show you the ace in my back pocket, but I'll tell you what it is now. The ace comes down to the very simple reminder for each and every one of you guys that come to a decision point about this company and ask yourself, with the small tidbits that Ryan's talking about might seem insignificant, collectively, they're pretty special. In other words, if I was going to drop a pros and cons category over this company, I could probably come up with a pretty good list of both. Okay. But I also think that the pro category would far outweigh the negative that I could come up with on this small company if I was being fair and didn't judge the company solely on being a new company. Mm -hmm. Ryan, they're not making enough revenue. No shit, they're new. Ryan, they're not making sales. No shit, they're new. Ryan, they're not growing fast enough. No shit, they're they're new. Ryan, they're not certified yet. No, no shit. You, you see a pattern here of stating the obvious and expecting me to react and agree with you in a manner that would somehow support your thesis? I don't see merit to that. I don't see merit to that application when we're talking about this company in its potential to go somewhere in the future. I full well understand that if this company was trading for $26 a share, I would nary a receive the scrutiny on the channel, rather a boastful uh, celebration of how incredible Ryan is an, as an investor, whereas I'm trying to share with people that it is a lot less if a lot less about luck and a lot more about just a deliberate and thought, thoughtful application in how I go about exercising my opportunity. Did I over lever? I gave you the progression of my stock purchases and I've shared with you four recent stock purchases. I've increased my small position in another uh, account, actually, altogether as a virgin uh, position in the company of 2,500 shares, um, all of it, all of which were purchased around share points of uh, uh, of $1.93. Those were those share buys that I've accumulated over the last, oh, couple of weeks anyway, 2,500 shares there with an additional 1,000 in the Charles Schwab account that I um, have I bought those at three dollars and seventeen cents. Um, I look at each of those blocks of shares as potential landmines that I'll continue to monitor, and if they stay landmines for forever, um, never to have gone off, I'm I'm okay with that. But my entry price is just that for each respective block of share that I've entered into, and I'm telling you, this new position in my it's actually in my um, my corporate account. I haven't added anything to uh, the personal accounts nor the brokerage accounts where I've held highly on shares now for years. It's no problem. I augment the cost basis by entering into what I feel like are oversold and very, very cheap shares now. That's what I'm doing. Ryan, this stock's going to ruin you. Um, how do I respond to such a stupid comment? Um, most people don't impress me. Um, I wish people could see things the way that I see things more, more often. 
And just to give you some idea about what that looks like, I, I don't give two shits what you do. I don't care at all. Now, when I qualified my goal with highly on holdings to make money, uh, my goal is to make you money too. That in its singular sense is the only thing I care about when it comes to my relationship with you. That's it. That is it. This is the calm. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about the potential of actually making money with this opportunity. So I'll lay the framework now to suggest that I will make a shit ton of people money in this opportunity. And I will nary a have people come back and just say, thank you. Because that is the way people are. Okay. I've got people disagreeing with me just because they disagree with my assessment to the company right now. They think I'm somehow ruining myself. I have worked since I was 12 years old on this earth, okay? The hardest money that I have ever made in this life came early on in my life when I was learning about the value of, of money. And I thought it was the coolest thing that I was getting paid under the table, $5.25 an hour of standing in uh, over 100 degree weather, kneeling down in the dirt, picking weeds at a, at a landscaping depot. That was my first job. I was, I was, I was 12, 12 years old. That was me. It was me. I know I was there. It was my brain. I was there. You just get to see a lot older version of me. And as I've gotten older, I have understood that in the way I can share with people and what I observe about other people, a lot of people make a lot of really, really easy money in legitimate and non-legitimate ways. All is fair in love and war. I'm not here to judge. No problem. You want to engage in a legal activity and make a ton of money easy? That's your thing. You'll have to accept the risks and the ramifications of when and if you get caught. Okay. Um, I'm a stand-up guy. I'm a legit guy. I do everything I do as legitimately as I can. The reason why I tell this story is for you guys to understand that the older that I have gotten, I have understood that making money comes in a lot of different forms. The last week in the stock market has just breathed. It has organically festered $10,000 in my account. I have no idea where or how it happened. Most people would look at $10,000 if they won that at an Indian casino, they would be over the moon. It would be a life-changing event. I just told you that it was immaterial as far as my week goes. I had a good week in the gym. I returned from my obligation. I'm, I'm very, very happy. I'm well-rested. Uh, made some great strides professionally, both with the business and with my career. Everything's great. Everything is absolutely phenomenal. I share those stories with you guys for you guys to understand that what makes sense for me may just not make sense to you. And I know for the masses out there, that's just not good enough. People want to hate on me. They want to hate on me because they're not optimist. They're absolutely pessimistic. And the criticism comes to try to take optimism and to somehow steer away from the potential of making a mistake. Optimistic people don't fear making mistakes, my friends. They don't. The stock market provides a very, very interesting alternative to gambling in that I get to play my hand when I want to play it. All right. So for you pessimistic people out there that are trying your old, ideological, frail, stale, dying on the vine perspectives about how to live life, I wish you all the best. I absolutely do. I have fought. I have won. I have lost. 
I have fought and not received any verdict as to whether or not I have won or lost on those lifetime battles. I don't know. I don't know. But make no mistake about it, my friends. I am dead serious about this. Dead serious to the extent that if this motherfucker wants to go to zero, I will be there for the long haul. No matter what the fuck you have got to say to me about what I should be doing with my money. Why? Because I am an optimist, not a pessimist. And I will not change my application in this life for me or you or anybody. Now, my aggressive spirit doesn't fit with everybody. So stop coming into the independent investor channel and trying to manufacture the type of energy that I bring to the table. Find your own energy. I give you all of the free will to find and tap that energy that's probably more aggressive than my energy in some capacities. But you will not know that it's there until you start to look and start to figure out in this life that you, the pessimist, and me, the optimist, at both of our impasses down the line, are headed for an inevitable truth. And that will be that we both expire someday, all right? It will be the very reflection upon your life to give you the indication of regret or not regretting the fact that you took a chance and you fought and you lost and you lost a lot, but by God, you won a lot too. I really appreciate you guys tuning into the message for the weekly highlight on video. Appreciate the continued support. Stocks at all time lows, no doubt about it. Hopefully this gave you some indication of framework below the surface to understand that you are investing in a seed. You are investing in the seed now. There is nothing that has broached the surface of the soil to give you some indication that by investing in that seed, that you're going to have material fruits to bear at some point down the line. When that happens, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't, I don't tell you that stuff. I am the realistic applicator to tell you that I don't know. And it's admirable for somebody like myself in the position that I'm in to come in and actually admit the things that I don't know, but also tell you the things that I absolutely do know. Guys, hit the subscription button for me to the channel. I appreciate the support. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. We will be back with you next week on the Highly on Updates. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message. And good luck in your investment future. Thank you.